Hey there everybody, it's Rarity here from InkyButterfly.com Thank you so much for joining me today I'm doing something a little different um, with uh, the video today We're going to look at a Stampin' Up! kit that we have available in the online store uh, They're all reduced at the moment as well during October So it's a real uh, great time to have a little uh, play with, with those if you think that it might be something that you, you like So um, some of the kits will have stamp sets, some of them won't, and, and all that kind of stuff. So there's loads of different types available. It's a really cute one that will make ornaments and, and things at the moment. So have a little look. There's um, a subcategory on the website for the kits uh, that can take you straight there. And like I say, there is a discount on those at the moment. And they all come in this really delightful box, which is super useful for storing stuff after the fact, or even the cards that you've made. Um... And of course, it's cardboard from Fully Recyclable, if you don't want to use it. But it will contain everything you need to make um, the projects that are that it's designed to, to produce. Uh, in this case, this one is called um, Garden of Thanks, I think. We'll just double check that in a second. Um, and this makes nine cards in three designs, if you want to stick to the instructions, okay? So... This one does have a little stamp set in it, so that it'll only be a little stamp set, generally speaking. So this one's got a couple of nice sentiments, you're the best, and thank you, and then I appreciate you so much, and this really nice sort of um, sprig branch leaf thingy, which is great, good for building backgrounds with, I would say. And that's a photopolymer set, just like you're used to. Um... If there is a stamp set, you'll get a coordinating ink spot. This is like a, this is a mini ink cube. In this case, we've got Misty Moonlight. So you just break the seal and you've got a little um, felt pad uh, there, ready inked and ready to go. There's probably going to be some kind of um, embellishments and adhesive and things like that. So in this little packet, we seem to have some matching Baker's Twine. So that looks like it's in the misty moonlight as well. And then this is a stamp block. So this isn't one of the um, full size uh, blocks with the ergonomic handles, but it's the same size as a D block, which is one of the most versatile blocks that I think we've got. So it's the same size as that, but it just doesn't have that ergonomic um, handle on it but it's really good to start building your collection because you'll get one with every one that has a um, stamp set within it these little things uh, that look really flat with the grey and white sort of adhesive on there they're like mini little glue dots some mini dimensionals exactly the same as what you would get on a full sheet just little um, some lovely sequins in this one. These look very much like the neutrals um, sequins. So you get a little pack of those. So, so we've got adhesive, we've got embellishments, we've got a stamp and a stamp block, some ink, and then we've got some cards and envelopes. Okay, so here we are with our envelopes. So these all appear to be the same with this really lovely gold um detail on the back and plain white otherwise okay so they're all the same and then we've got the card blanks themselves so we've got three that coordinate exactly with the envelopes in that gold all printed on white okay and then we've got three in this design with these cute florals all over them that's nice, isn't it? But, look at that. It's printed on both sides, which means, you know, there's half that you won't see. So, I think we'll be cutting those in half and using them as separate toppers, and that's instantly giving you six cards. Okay. Same with this one. It's printed on both sides, so cut them down and put them on a plain card base. And then you'll instantly double the set. And then, here we are with... A blue version that looks like boho blue um so again you could cut these down and make those into different panels as well 
and then we've got all the little bits and pieces that go with them so some really nice little gold um, detail on these circles for sentiments we've got some die cut sentiments here in um, English, French and German some lovely floral die cuts as well so it looks like we've got three sheets of those yep And then we've got a sheet of these. Is there just one sheet or is there two? No, just the one. Okay. And then, what's this? I think this might just be a guide to what the stamp set looks like. Okay, and what we get in it. Okay. That's fine. And then we'll get an instruction sheet so yeah garden of thanks it's called okay and the instructions are all um in picture form so that you can just build those together it tells you which card base uh, to use the die cut elements that you're going to use the embellishments just to make some really simple cards so that's card number one and then number two we we'll use the blue base and we stamp the embellishment, use the die cut, stamp a sentiment and it even tells you where to position the uh, glue dots or dimensionals. I think those are going to be dimensionals. The little black spots I think are glue dots and then there's little white hexagons denoting the dimensionals and then our third card is here okay indicating which card base you will need stamping the sentiment onto one of these the die cuts that you'll require with some twine and again where to position your dimensionals and what embellishments you will need okay so really nice and straightforward to follow okay uh, there's a little sort of summary on the back of the elements you need for each design without necessarily the instructions okay um, and then on the back we've just got a bit of a, a summary of what we what the kit contains and we do have some QR codes there if you wanted to get some um, more inspiration um, it also details what the coordinating colours are so if you're interested and you're, you're just looking at the berry burst boho blue bubble bath Fresh Freesia, Lemon, Lime, Twist, Misty Moonlight, Old Olive, Petunia Pop and Gold. Those are the colours that are in that kit. Okay, so I think we've covered all of that. Okay, there's even a little ruler on the side, which, which is kind of cool. Okay. So, if we want to make the cards as is, that's what we can do. Okay, so I did guess right that that is boho blue, alright. So we can make the cards as is, or we can, like I say, make things um, stretch a little further. Okay. So let's see what, what what we can make. Okay. So of course, if you want to, just stick with the instructions. They're all there um, for you to use. Okay. But these are all just very gorgeous, aren't they? very very gorgeous um, and just wondering how we can make these stretch a little further okay might want to pull in some of your supplies that you've already collected as well okay but I think I'd definitely be thinking about cutting these up and making something different out of these so let's take one each of these okay this is on like a bright white card stuff which is a little different to plain whisper white uh, not whisper white basic white it's a little bit brighter um, so this is more like um, the willow white that is now available in the scrapbooking kits in case you're wondering so that would be good if you've uh, actually invested in any of that and um, that would be a good match for these to make your additional car bases if you wanted to okay now of course I've got lots more blocks so um, and what I might do is just pop some of these onto 
some additional blocks so that we've got them ready to do. I'll, I'll, I'll use this big one, but I'll also pop, um, I'll get a couple of my B blocks out for the sentiments there so that we can just get them rocking and rolling. Okay, and we've got this little I appreciate you as well. I'm going to stick on a C block. Let's just put that flat. Anything long and oops, long and thin like this is prone to bending um, as you lay it down. So if you put it on your surface, let it relax, and then take your block to it, you're more likely to get it sort of stuck straight on there if you like. Uh, what have I just done with? There it is. It's clear on my desk which meant I couldn't find it again so I'm just gonna pop in fact I'm gonna pop that with the box over there so that I don't lose it okay and then of course we've got you know if you've been crafting for some time you'll have extra adhesive of your choice as well so we've got all that standard stuff plus all our bits and pieces okay this is gonna be fun I really like this one I'm inclined to do one of these sim these backgrounds first and see what we end up with. Okay, and these will be sized um, for um, the American A2 cards, I should imagine. So I bet these are four and a half. Oh no, they're five and a half by four and a quarter. Yeah, that's right, five and a half by four and a quarter, which is basically half of a. Uh, a, uh, a US eight and a half by eleven, and of course here we you should use the international A4. So it is going to be sized off a little bit, but we can trim it down and make it fit. Okay, let's grab. Let's grab some what car base. So I'm going to make a car base with my basic white. Well, I'm going to make two actually, because that's how I rock and roll. So to make my car base, I'm going to score this um, A4 sheet on the long side at 5 and 7 eighths. And then I'm going to rotate that round and cut on the short side at 4 and 1 eighth. You can make your car bases however, whatever size you like. Um, this is just my formula and what I do. And you just need to cut just a skinny bit off the other one which is easy with this paper trimmer from Stampin' Up. Okay, so I've got two top folding car bases there, which will just pop uh, that crease in on there. Okay. And then while the trimmer is out, we can have a look at what we've got here. So what did we say this was? Four and a quarter. So ideally we want this to be um, four. But the length would have to be five and three quarters. And of course it's not long enough. So that would be a full car blank. So if I took it to five and a quarter. That would probably work. So I think. We can do that. So let's trim off. I'm going to make it even, so I'm going to do an eighth off this edge, an eighth off this edge. We should take it to five and a quarter, which means I need it three and a half on here. So, so I think what I'm going to do is. So what did we say this was? Four, four and a quarter. And we want it three and a half. Okay, so let's trim it down to let's trim it down to three and three quarters. And then down to three and a half. And that means that that sort of the pattern kind of fills that card and we've got an even border around the edge which we can then mat up we could um 
use one of these coordinating colours in here to um, layer that up. So petunia pulp or fresh fresh or something like that around the edge will then frame that up really really nicely depending on how we want to use it. So again we'll just I'm gonna take off a quarter inch on there and get this down to three and a half. Just checking that that's the same size. Yep it is okay so one card is gonna one card base is gonna make two cards okay and I've got some little scraps here so these little end bits we probably don't need but I do have this little strip okay now if you cover that score line with some ribbon you can make a sentiment banner out of that so we'll keep that and maybe we'll do that to use up some of that scrap that's already got that beautiful um, embossing on it. So we can make two of these cards now. Okay. All right. But let's just pop this to one side and we'll concentrate on one. Okay. So what are we going to use in terms of embellishing? Okay. So if we want to sort of stick with. Now, what have we been given to work with these cards? And we've been given the die cuts and this big um, floral image. Okay, so I'm thinking that actually the floral image probably works on its own, to be honest with you. I could save the die cuts for somewhere else. Okay, sometimes less is more. Okay, so we'll conserve some of that and maybe that's what the partner card would look like so we could use the large die cut on so it's this die cut that they suggest we use mm -hmm. along with one each of these Ooh. just want to ease that out just it's quite delicate so just give it a bit of a twist and a bend and it should fall out of there so there's that one just trying to be careful with it but at the same time don't want to be here all day. These are the kind of things that um, this is the kind of job that I would just do as a you know like a prep thing. I would just get them all out and just have them loose in the box or something. So that's a good way to, to get started with these, just get all the bits popped out and then it's ready to go and you'll find that the process is a, a little quicker. Okay, so I'm just gonna Tear that away just for a second, just so that it's not in my way. Okay, so these guys are going to be able to just be layered together. I could even do them individually. And we could just do a simple sentiment on those. Okay, we could even bring in this bit here and pop that across. And do something like that or we can leave this for an entirely different card okay or just punt we could just punch out something as well okay so let's go with this um what color do we think that is petunia pop i reckon and as if by magic here's some petunia pop and is it going to be big enough for both of these yeah okay so let's bring the trimmer back in <clears throat> so uh what were we five and a quarter so let's shove that along an eighth i'm going to keep 
that with that little bit of um, gold. Uh, five and a quarter by um, three and a half, wasn't it? Yep. So shove that over an eighth. got another little bit of petunia pop that we could use as an accent for something else. We've got these gold details in here and I've actually got, there's a new product um, that's just been released called Gold Twisted Thread. Uh, that would look good. Kind of in keeping with those. So we might bring that in as well. And we've got our Misty Moonlight stuff in the, um, in the kit. So I said I was only going to do one of these at a time, but hey, apparently we're going to do both of them. So, let's just get this layered up. When your trimmer blade starts to get a bit um, dull, you might get some little frayed bits um, on your cardstock. If that happens, you can use one of these nail file blocks just to knock off those little fuzzies on the end. It's perfect. I'm tempted to use some Misty Moonlight with this rather than um, the Petunia Pop just to give us a different look. I've got large piece of this no I don't it's not in my I haven't got enough in there for cutting that down so let's just grab a sheet So whenever I'm cutting into a full sheet of cardstock, I always do the first cut at four and a one eighth because then I can use it for a card base um, if I want to. Five and a quarter and a bit. Three and a half and a bit. By a bit, I mean an eighth. And now I've got a little Mr. Moon Knight strip that I can use over there as well. Do our other panel and Mr. Moonlight. And I'm thinking if I use that with those little die cuts and I use the Misty Moonlight ink, you've gone then got that sort of tie with that layer and that ink, because that's what we're we're going with, okay? So I think this one and this one. This one and this one. Ooh. Cute. Okay. So that's what we can do with those. Oh, there's a little um extra piece in there. So I'll just get rid of that. If it would have mattered. So you can kind of, you know, you can angle that however you want. And we can uh, use whatever we want for the sentiment so um, for this particular card it's identified these um, circles to use but of course you don't have to okay we could just use a punched circle from our punches that we've got here okay so again if you've got um, punches and things that's going to come in really really useful I'm not sticking these down yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to add any twine or anything to these yet okay does suggest that I can use some twine on these so we can do a lovely you're the best or a thank you I don't suppose it matters we could do one of each I guess let's do that let's do that with these little um, ink spots do you find it's better to take it to the 
ink, not the ink, what's this called, a stamp. And what I didn't do was just give that a quick um, wipe. So in the manufacturing process, there's kind of like a little film that sometimes ends up on. So I just use my stamp, stamping scrub, just dry, and I just um, wipe those off. And you'll find that they take the ink far better if you do that. And I can see that that's going to look super. It doesn't really matter if it's not straight because we're cutting it from a circle. Which means that you can twistle your circle to make it look straight or as wonky as you want. Okay, so that's an ink spot. And of course if you've got the larger ink pads then um, you can obviously use those or use a completely colour altogether. So, you know, if you've got the Petunia Pop, if you're a, a new, if you joined and got all the ink colours, then the Petunia Pop could, could work very well here. Okay, so that circle's quite big for that. There's loads of dyes that you could use as well, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to use what I've got. And this happens to be what I've got. Uh, this is the one and three quarter punch. Not sure if that's still available actually, um, but there's others you can use. And if you've crafted for a long time like I have, you've probably got a whole stash of stuff that um, you can use. Okay, so we've got those. I think I might do that one and that one, that one and that one. Okay. So this is what we've got so far. Okay. And I reckon that we're in a position to start sticking some stuff down. Okay. So let's do that. I think we'll just do this flat. I love this petunia pop colour, isn't it lovely? Um, just get your borders nice and even. We've made all that effort to get them even, so we'll stick that centrally. And that, that layer just detracts from the fact that those whites aren't quite the same. Okay. So this is going to need um, some dimensionals on the back. Could use these little ones, but I'm going to go and grab my larger dimensionals for this. Okay, but again, if you haven't got them and you're just using the ones in the kit, then let's just go ahead and do that. Don't need tons of them. And there is a a suggestion of what you can, how many you need, and where to place them on the um, the kit itself. Okay. Just wondering about putting some twine behind this in like um you know some loopy dupes but I might put it over the top rather than um and then un under the sentiment but over the top of this a bit like a tied bouquet if you know what I mean I think I might pop that there okay and then we have this lovely twine to use. Okay, so let's get that off and I'm gonna pop some seal on there and just let this sort of um, make some loops. See where it wants to land. Another one up there. I don't really want it to look like a flower though. And it wants to twist doing that way, so that's the other thing I don't want it to do, I don't want it to twist. It's twisting. Okay. So it doesn't want to go that way. So let's just do the end and chop that off. And 
then this guy can go there and for this some mini dimensionals would be cool because what we can do is hide them um, conveniently in between those little bits of ribbon uh, or twine I should say because um, you don't want those to go um, on top of that twine because it won't stick so well okay so if you three should be fine the seal adhesive will hold um, the other bits in place quite happily but I'm going to um, and again these are all just sort of optional extras you can pop a bit of glue on the on that little bit there and it will dry and help secure it but um, it, it should just be fine. That's just me being belts and braces about it. Okay. The stamp blocks make really great um, weights as well for helping you stick down stuff if you want to. Okay. And we can use a couple of our lovely little sequins on this as well, which would look beautiful. Just tie this together. Obviously, that's not quite dry yet, so that's why that's wobbling around a bit. Okay, so that's going to dry. While we do something with this one. Okay, so for this one, I'm inclined to put a bit of twine around it. Once I've um, stuck these all down, so let's just pop those in place. Um, I think it will uh, suggested use just using the uh, the glue dots for these, um, but I'm just going to put the merest amount of glue along that stem. that down oops Is it the same with this so you could decide to use the green on top or the pink on top it's all very much up to you probably if I'd have been thinking a bit, bit clearer, I probably would have just um, done that the other way around, but I think it looks fine just like that. And then I think we'll wrap some twine around this one. So we're going to need a little bit of this to secure that in place. around a couple of times and then snip that off and we can adhere that to the card card base I should say oops so we'll press that down so that's... now that it's pressed down it'll be fine just make sure that's the right way up and pop that in and voila and then we've got our sentiment that we can pop in I think this one's going to go towards this side this time so we'll pop dimensional top and bottom on those and again because I can I can use the bigger ones that I've got in my stash for that So, could add a bit of a knot or something on this as well to um, just make that look more finished. So let's just pop 
pop that through. And just add that. Or even a bow if you wanted to. But, you know, sometimes we just want quick and easy and a knot will be just as good. Okay, so hopefully you saw enough of that. Um, so I just cut off at the end there while well. I was just fraying that ribbon. Uh, trying, I should say. Just used my pokey tool just to um, to fray that out. Okay, and just un unravel it. Just uh, unpick it a little bit and then it just gives it that, that look. And a couple more of those sequins on the side. So I've used one card base from the kit to make two cards. Okay, and um, because I've used elements that were going to go with those anyway, I haven't sort of used more consumables than I, I would have done normally. I've used those and that, but I've made two cards out of them, okay, on that single card base, which is what they would have designed, designed to do. But I still have this um, gold-edged circle um, left over that I didn't use. Okay, so I've stretched the supplies to make double the amount. Okay, so the same could apply to any of those um, elements. And then, of course, bringing in other things from your stash, stash like the um, coloured cardstock or different coloured ink. Okay, different embellishments like this gold twine or any other elements that might match. We've got the um, in colour ribbons. So, again, if you joined. Um, you might have invested in some of that and what I've also have left over from that um, little bit of um, finagling was these little strips of cardstock which coordinate okay so I'm going to be able to layer this together to make a really nice little um, sentiment strip or something on what would uh, ordinarily be a kind of clean and simple card okay or I could even use this bit of petunia pop okay there's a really skinny bit there so as long as you're covering the score line you could probably make something else out of that as well okay um, so that would be really really nice to do and if um, I'm gonna make something with that and I'll pop it onto the blog so you'll see a picture of that as well um but that's it for today in terms of that because these videos run longer than i thought it was going to um i'd really love to make something with the other two car bases as well okay so maybe there's going to be a part two to this then to see what else we can do and what other supplies um we can add in and how we can make this go a little bit further okay okay, okay. um i'll leave it there for now Hope you're staying safe, do take care, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.